Hi Nuggets! This lesson is going to cover prefixes and the vocabulary for the short story, The Most Dangerous Game. We're going to focus especially on context clues and prefixes. Let's get started! First of all, prefixes. You should already be familiar with the term prefix, but in case you've forgotten, make sure you add this to your notes. A prefix is a letter or group of letters attached to the beginning of a word that partly indicates its meaning. You've probably noticed that many of your root words, when you're locating them in new vocabulary words, many of them so far this year have been prefixes, meaning they're added to the beginning. However, as you see in the green text here, be careful. Just with your roots words, same thing. Just because a word begins with the same letters as a prefix doesn't mean that it is a prefix. For example, these words use the prefix re, which means back or to return. So you have recall to call back, return to give back. But just because a word starts with re doesn't mean that it's using that prefix. Just like a word that has the l same letters as a root doesn't necessarily use that root. So these words do not have prefixes. The RE does not mean back and it is not added on to another word. The word real means not fake or authentic. You'll notice in the definition there's nothing about going back. The same with the word read. To recognize and interpret words in meaningful ways. You're not doing something again. And a final example, reap, starts with RE, means to harvest or gather, but it doesn't have anything to do with the prefix. So that's how we know that these words, recall and return, do use the prefix, and these words, real, read, and reap, do not. This is a helpful lesson to keep in mind, especially when you're doing your word trees as well. The way we'll do the words this week is I will give you a sentence and there will also be an image and then I want you to try to guess what the word means and then we'll also focus on the prefix that is used in that particular word. So the first word is receding. The receding car looked like an ant on the horizon. Now in your notes you don't need to write the sample sentence but you should write the word, the part of speech and its definition, and any prefixes that appear on the slide. So based on this sentence, the receding car looked like an ant on the horizon, and this lovely image over here, what do you think receding means? It means, and this is what you need to write down, receding is a verb, it can also be used as an adjective, and it means to become more distant. So something is receding when you are moving away from it, or it is moving away from you. So this gentleman's hair is receding because it is moving away from us towards the back of his head as he's losing it. And the prefix in this particular word, as you can see it's highlighted, is RE, the one that we looked at in the previous example. So make sure that you also write down the prefix RE and what it means. Back again, and two examples of words that use this root are return and redo. Our next word is disarming. Again, you don't need to write the sentence, but let's look at context clues and try to figure it out. The con man's disarming smile deceived the old woman, and she forked over her life savings. So if you were trying to con someone out of their money, why would you smile at them? Well, maybe you're trying to earn the person's trust so that they'll give you a large amount of money, right? Also, let's look at the pictures for clues. Cute little bunny, right? Looks sweet, looks lovable, but secretly, bunny is a vampire. I'm alluding to the book Benicula, if you read that when you were in elementary school or middle school. Great book. Let's see what disarming means. Notice it uses one of your root words. Disarming, it's an adjective. It is not a verb. We're not talking about asking someone to lay down their weapons specifically, although the word can definitely mean that. In this story, and in most instances, disarming does not mean to put down your weapon. 
It means to remove or lessen suspicions or fears. You're putting someone at ease. You're making them feel comfortable. You're smiling at them. You're being disarming. You're trying to make someone trust you. This, of course, as you know, should mean no, not, away, apart. So if someone is dishonest, they are not honest. If you disapprove of something, you do not approve of it. Make sure that you write down the prefix and the definition. And again, this particular one should be review for you. On to our next word, prolonged. The tie prolonged the game, pushing it into overtime. So prolonged. If it went into overtime, what does that mean? It made it longer. Let's also look at our image for clues. Uh, this is an extension ladder, so you would use it to reach a farther place, right? So prolonged, which can be a verb or an adjective, means extended or to go over something. Your prefix in this word is pro. Pro means forward, before, or over. Okay. One of the words that I will frequently use with you as a student and I try to reinforce with you is the need to be proactive. You are taking action before you need to. To proclaim, it means to claim over. It literally means that you're standing there announcing something over people. And of course, to be promoted means that you get advanced forward in your organization. Our next word is imprudent. So let's look at the sample sentence for context clues. It is imprudent to sleep in class because you miss important information. So even if we don't know what imprudent means, we can make an educated guess based on the context clues. Well, if you're sleeping and missing important information, that's probably not a good thing. So I would guess something that imprudent probably means not good or not smart. Let's also look at the picture for clues. This is a fable that we've already talked about when we talked about allegories previously. And remember, a fable is a short story meant to impart a moral lesson and usually the animals symbolize or represent character traits in order to teach that lesson. So the ant worked all summer and saved a bunch of food, and the grasshopper played all summer, hanging around with his guitar, slacking off, being lazy. And then in the wintertime, the ant has food to survive on, and the grasshopper, as you can see, looks very sad, is starving. We would say that the grasshopper's behavior in the summer was imprudent or unwise. Imprudent means in unwise. And the prefix im means no or not. So imprudent means unwise. If I took off the im and I just had prudent, what would you guess prudent meant? Without the prefix, you're right. It would mean wise. So prudent means wise. Imprudent means unwise or not smart. And examples of other words that use this prefix, improper. Uh, if you have improper attire, you're not in dress code, you have to go to the office. So not proper. Improper attire is often immodest, meaning not modest, meaning it is not covering up as much as it should be. Don't forget to write down the prefix as well as the word with the part of speech and definition. Surmounted. I surmounted my fear of heights by going skydiving. In this picture, we see uh, track stars surmounting uh, an obstacle, doing hurdles. So what would you guess surmounted meant? If I had a fear of heights, would I go skydiving? That would take some, some bravery. I'd have to get over my fear of heights, and that, of course, is what surmounted means. Surmounted is a verb, so it can only be used as an action, and it means to overcome or to get over. So what would you guess sir as the prefix means? If you guessed over or above, you were correct. So surmounted, the hurdlers are going over the hurdles. They are surmounting them. 
Uh, you often hear this word used with disease. So I surmounted cancer or I um, also it's often used with poverty. I surmounted poverty to go to college and now I have a career as a teacher. So that's an example. Um, sir means above or over. So here are two examples. A surface is above what's underneath it and a surcharge. So for example, if you don't pay your bills on time, you might get an extra fee or there might be hidden fees in your bill. So that would be an overcharge above and beyond what you would normally pay. So that's called a surcharge. Next word. Unruffled. So we have a picture of Timon and Pumbaa because their catchphrase was Akuna Matata. And if you believe in that phrase, no worries, you are an uh, unruffled person. An unruffled person would believe in Akuna Matata. Let's look at the sentence for context clues. Despite the customer's nasty comments, the employee managed to remain unruffled. Now, if someone's being nasty to me, I probably am inclined to be nasty back. But as an adult and as a professional, this employee is not going to react. They're going to be mature and not let it get to them. They're going to remain unruffled. Unruffled is an adjective which means calmed, not disturbed. So you might be upset on the inside, but you buckle it down and you hold your tongue and you relax. Unruffled means calm or not disturbed. And the prefix is un, which you, I'm sure you already know the meaning for this one. Un means not or the reverse of. So two other examples of words that use un as a prefix would be unattractive. So if uh, something is not attractive to you, unattractive. Unlikely means it's not likely to occur, not likely. Don't forget to write down the word and the prefix. Invariably. Now, over here, I have a picture of a clock, all right? If you say something happens like clockwork, that means that it's predictable and it's reliable and you always know when it's going to happen and how it's going to happen. Let's look at the sample sentence for context clues. Jim invariably turned in homework late, so his teacher was shocked the day he turned in the essay on time. If he invariably turns in work late and his teacher is shocked, so the teacher is totally surprised when he turns it in on time. Invariably, all right, must mean that normally, why would she be shocked if it's on time? That must mean that he usually turns it in late. Invariably means always without changing. Without changing. A good way to think of this word is to take the prefix and then look at the root that's after it. So in, of course, means no or not. And when you look at the word not variably, well, think about science class. What is a variable? A variable is something that you change in the experiment to test different hypotheses. So it literally means not changing without changing. Other examples of words that use this prefix, inaccurate, inadequate. If you're inaccurate, you are wrong. It's not accurate. If you're inadequate, it's not adequate. It means it doesn't satisfy or it doesn't meet the expectations. Diverting. Diverting. This word has a couple different meanings and the picture and the sentence both illustrate it. So in the picture, we see two roads that are diverging in two different directions. The sentence, on the other hand, says, I didn't find the movie diverting at all. Don't waste your money. Well, if you're telling people not to waste your money, did you enjoy the film? Did you find it entertaining? No. And that is exactly what diverting means. It means entertaining or to pull to the side. Now, in the story, it's definitely going to have the meaning entertaining. This comes to us from the prefix die, which means away or apart, and vert, which means to turn. So away, apart, to turn. When something's entertaining, you are distracted by it. You turn towards it because it entertains you. And that's the origin of this adjective, this word, diverting. 
Diverting can also be used to say, I was diverted off the highway because of traffic. Um, so if you were circumventing traffic, or you could have diverted um, off. Di means away or apart. Other examples that use this word are dialogue, okay, because you go back and forth between two people, split, dialysis, and diverge, okay, and diverge is very often confused with divert. So to divert is to direct off in another attention, diverge is to split. Dialysis is something that, let's say, for example, your kidneys fail. It's a procedure that you sit in the hospital and your blood is pumped out of your body through a machine and they take away the waste in your blood so that your body doesn't poison itself. Dialysis. So you're turning away. Impulse. I had the impulse to scream when the teacher repeated the directions for the tenth time. The picture on the other side, if you've ever been to the doctor's office and you've checked your reflexes, when the doctor dings you with a hammer in just the right place, your leg or your elbows react impulsively without you thinking about it. And that's what impulse means. An impulse, which is a noun, is a sudden urge to do something. The key with an impulse is that you don't think about it, you just react. You're not thinking about it. So if you have impulsive behavior, sometimes that gets you into trouble. Notice there's no prefix here because does I am in this sentence mean not, not pulse? No, it doesn't. This is an example of a word that does not use a prefix. And the last one, protruding. Let's look at the picture and let's look at the sentence. The disorganized student had papers protruding from his backpack. Pinocchio's nose protrudes from his face. Pro, you've seen before. Do you remember what it means? You're right. It means above or over. So protruding, it can be used as a verb or as an adjective, and it means sticking out. So. A disorganized student would have papers sticking out from his or her backpack. And that's it. Don't forget to complete your most dangerous game vocabulary development worksheet. Don't forget section B, which forces you to go a little bit farther with some of these prefixes. And coming soon to a class near you. Uh, check our class calendar in Fusion to see when your vocabulary quiz on these 10 words will be. On the quiz, remember you should be able to spell the word, you should know each word's part of speech, and how to use the word in a sentence. If you have any questions, please see me. See you in class. Bye!